Welcome back. This week, we're going to feature this super funky old school. It is a 1969. It is build 111. Let's, uh, let's go get out in the heat of the sun and drive you around and I'll show you more and more. really like the character of this truck. It's super fun, a funky, mid-century, groovy, I don't know, all those words fit, and I'm sure there's plenty more in your brain, but it's just a really interesting combination. The color is actually a factory color. It's referred to as Jade Glow Green. I don't recall if it's correct for 69, but it is a Ford OEM color of the era. We paired this funky green with the traditional Wimbledon white. We use that on both the dash, the hard top, the front grille insert, and on the old school forged aluminum wheels. We jade glow painted the steering wheel and it just all pairs together really nice. I think Ranger trim might have been a bit much on this truck with all the vibrance going on. So I like that the client did not select that option on this one. The interior on it is super fun and lively. Uh, this is the amazing Spinnybeck leather. We've been working with them for a couple of years in Europe. They're the guys who do the really funky weaves for us as well. But on this truck, we did not do a weave. Instead, we used a very interesting high-end out door commercial upholstery woven material that just beautifully referenced the jade glow green color and style. We were able to plan ahead so the dossier, the document bag that each icon client gets with all their care and feeding and ownership instructions um, is done in the same leather and same fabric. I'm really uh, happy when we're able to pull off the timing to make that work especially in this case because it's just such, such a unique combo. We ran the BF Goodrich mud terrain tires on this one at the client's request. Of course, we have the Icon Sport brakes by our friends at Brembo. It is Hydro Boost assisted with the Wellwood Master six piston front callies, four piston rear, plus a dedicated mechanical parking brake. We have the sport suspension option by Icon. So of course you standard equipment, never any leaf springs to be found. It's coil over all the way around. But the sport suspension means that you upgraded to the nitrogen charged remote canister Fox Racing shock with dual rate tuning. The fast and slow rate rebound settings can be adjusted very simply from the knurled knobs upon the remote canisters. Two and a half inch body, 12 inches of travel, IBOC coils, tunable sway bars, radius arm front, four link in the rear. And it's a really nice setup. So usually if you build something for on-road refinement, you're gonna sacrifice off-road performance. But here at Icon, we've always tried to ride the knife's edge and accept the additional challenge when engineering our suspension and chassis to make sure that nothing we do to improve the on-road performance negates the off-road performance. And the result is a surprisingly compliant and comfortable vehicle, quite stable despite the short wheelbase and tall stance. I mean, still a two-ton toaster on solid axles, but um, I haven't rolled one yet and uh, I have tried. For the powertrain on this truck, of course, we're running the Coyote 5 liter aluminum fuel injected V8 as found in the current production Mustang GT. Put out about 440 or so horse and torque. Wonderful motor, makes lovely sounds. The exhaust system on this truck is the restrained Icon Borla stainless steel system left without the ceramic coating. We pretty much never do that on the old schools. For transmissions, this truck is running the recent update transmission that Icon is running, which we are just so in love with. It's from the Ford Raptor. 
It is extremely capable, very responsive, super playful, and it has a sport mode, which will hold RPMs and take you up higher through each shift. But we have noticed if you're not in the sport mode, yes, it's shifting more because there's a lot more gears. However, it's way more fuel efficient and quieter because you're not exploring those higher RPMs as much due to the gearing in the 10 speed tranny. Atlas II shift on the fly, part-time four-wheel drive, two-speed transfer case, 1310 U-joints, sending power down to the Curry Industries Icon specific, brand new down to the castings, Dana 44 high pinion in the front, Dana 60 high pinion in the rear. Front is upgraded with fine spline axles and all possible improvements. And in the rear, well, it's a Dana 60, so it really didn't need any improvements. We did outfit this truck with the optional ARB locking differentials with the dedicated air compressor that uh, gives you locker control in the front and rear axles. Moving back to the interior, this truck has an Alcantara sort of uh, gray bone white headliner assembly. The door and cargo panels are the usual old school fare with the chromed spears running down the belt line of the vehicle. Those have two stages of indirect diffused LEDs. So one is full bright and that is what happens when the door is ajar and you excite the dome light. And then at night when the headlights are on, it has a much lower output just to sort of give you a nice interior vibe and nice visibility all around. Audio system on this truck is the elevated audio. So you get the Focal K2 speakers with remote tweeters. You get amp and bass. You get the Pioneer NEX latest gen head unit with tetherless CarPlay, reverse camera, CD, AM, FM, HD, sat radio, a whole bunch of stuff, a really nice head unit. The only thing I wish they did was a rotary knob instead of push button for volume, but I understand they wanted to maximize the screen space, so deleting the knob gave them a couple extra millimeter. But in a four wheel drive, I think in a perfect world, it's easier to actuate and feel without looking for the knob. That audio system is housed in the Icon as stainless steel center console. So we've embossed the Icon Lizard on the foam leather wrapped top cover. The audio system has its own sub lid for security. And then the principal storage area is really quite large and you've got a gas shock along with interior LED lighting front cup holders and then on the rear some clients have us fit a second cup holder some don't but you always get the dual power ports as well as led lighting for the rear floor we sell those consoles they're frequently out of stock but we just upped the inventory again and have them ready to go for you we also did the carbon fiber two stage low and high seat heaters in the front seats and we did the tuck and tumble bench seat that is actually also removable in the cargo area. Because of the styling decisions made on this interior, we decided to go with a light gray seat belt webbing, which seems to flow. The black normal one just looks, I don't know, a little heavy. Also, as with all of the more recent Icon Bronco builds, we're using completely brand new Ford licensed bodies. There are a couple quality control issues with them from the usual suppliers. So we developed our own set of fixtures and jigs, plus a couple of our own stampings to drastically improve the fit and finish and gapping of these bodies. By using a new body, not only do we eliminate all of the variables and conditions found on each and every unique vintage body, but we're also now able to completely 3M caulk all body seams and then powder coat the body assembly. No one else does that. Why? Well, technically it's fairly complicated to find the right powder at the right bake temperature that does not warp sheet metal panels. And it takes a lot more time and a fair bit more money. The good news though, it's beyond worth it because the way powder coating works, it starts as a powder and you've got a positive charge and a negative charge that attracts that media to the metal 
then it liquefies and then it hardens and cures to a solid. It gets into every nook and cranny of the body. And it's just absolutely impossible to do with conventional primers or paints. Body shop department's not too happy about it because it's a pain in the ass to block sand and prep because it's a lot harder to scratch it up and get the mechanical tooth needed to complement the chemical tooth of conventional paint. But it also ends up making the paint look a hell of a lot thicker and deeper and better. As you'll notice the paint finish on this truck's quite lovely. And in fact, as we're shooting it, um, what I'm showing you today is before paint correction and ceramic coating. So this has yet to be fully color sanded and then ceramic coated sealed, and it already looks best in class. This client also did the chrome bumper option as well as the old school optional spare tire carrier assembly. Those do fit stock Broncos with or without body lifts. They were available on this site. They're quite popular because the stock tire carriers completely suck. They rattle like crazy. They want to rip your fingers off when you close them or open. And the silliest thing is they block your visibility over your right shoulder when you're trying to change lanes. So we moved it over to the left side. We brace it on three different axes directly to the chassis. So it's independent of the body. And that also increases your rear crash safety because we have a large heavy gauge steel channel that now runs left to right as part of the mounting system for the bumper. So there you go. That's it. That's our story. Appreciate your time and attention. Please like, share, subscribe, and all those beautiful things that seem to matter these days. And uh, we'll see you again next week with uh, hopefully something else you'll find entertaining.